Hi everyone. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed a very important point that we were talking about the path loss models and we classified it as large scale and small scale effects. And we said large scale effects concerns when uh, the mobile device is moving by several tens of wavelengths. Then the large scale model or the large scale effects, the model that you develop using large scale effects will capture the power, the average power received by your cellular phone when your cell phone is moving by several wavelengths. And small scale effects is, I, I gave a very simple example, I said if you have a transmitter and your mobile phone is moving in a small room, uh, the large scale effects meaning when the, if your cell phone is moving by very few wavelengths inside a small room, then the signal, the parts that the signal take as far as the longer distances or the large scale parts will not change much. So the power that we are going to estimate using this model will not change much if your cell phone is moving by small few wavelengths. But in reality, the cell phone power will even change if you move, if, even if you move by few wavelengths. And that is captured in the small scale effects. Okay, I showed an example of received power as a function of distance and we saw that the average received power was more or less constant. But the instantaneous received power instantly, if the cell phone is moving by few, few uh, wavelengths, we saw the cell phone power was suddenly dipping and so on. So this is captured by the small scale effects and this is captured by the large scale effects. Now one of the more important points of the previous lecture is that we said that this is the expression for path loss. So previously that is before the last two lectures we have always thought path loss as a deterministic problem. Meaning if you know the value of the path loss exponent and the path loss at a certain distance Okay, so there are, just quickly to clarify, there are two small uh, differences one has to understand here. So first, this is what I have shown in this graph is the received power as a function of distance. Received power will reduce at the rate of 10 n decibels per decade, 10 n dB per decade. Okay, for n is 2, it's 20 decibels per decade. Path loss is a loss, you know, so it will increase as you move away from distance. So because your received power is simply the transmitted power minus the path loss as a function of distance r. So your path loss will increase when you subtract it, your received power will decrease. So that's the main difference. Path loss will increase at the rate of 10 n decibels per decade. So if you move by 10 times the distance, your power or the path loss would have increased by 10 into n. Same way received power would have reduced by 10 into n. So that's the fundamental difference. So now we, the more important thing is that we said how to calculate the value of n in the previous lectures. We said one, we can mathematically or analytically guess the value of n if you use an electromagnetic analysis. You know, if you knew that, you could get that. Or we said when the paths become too complicated, we can no longer derive it analytically. So for example, if you remember the free case path loss, a path loss model, n was equal to 2. And if I assumed a two-ray model, one reflected path, if I considered that, n was equal to 4. But then in reality, you have much, many, many more paths to the receiver. So therefore, we can't simply analytically calculate it using some, uh, analytically derive it using some simple models. Rather, we said that we estimate it from measured results. I mean, we try to measure power at different levels and try to do the best curve fitting. So that you minimize the mean squared error. Okay, best straight line fitting. Sorry, it's a straight line fitting problem. So then the, the additional important point which we discussed in the large scale effects is the randomness. We said even if you know n and the received power, we cannot exactly determine what is the path loss or the received power at a certain distance r because it's going to vary from location to location. Some region may contain open space, some region may have, it, it may be coverage may be needed inside a forest. In some places it might be in the middle of buildings and all that in a city urban environment. And the value of n always keeps varying. We said for free space path loss n is 2, for two-ray model even in free space was n is 4, usually for in buildings in those regions it can go up to 6 as well. n varies from 4 to 6 in urban areas. So then we said uh, it depends, it's a heavy function of what is that, the obstacles and all that, so therefore we cannot give a deterministic model. So and I said that whenever we cannot have a complete deterministic model, we tend to go for probability theory. Okay, with a certain probability instead of saying what is the exact received power or what is the exact path loss at a certain distance or what is the exact received power at a certain distance, I will tell you what is the probability that the received power is greater than certain number with a certain probability. 
okay so then we introduced what we call as log normal distribution we said it's a distribution it's a logarithmic distribution but the x axis in is in db scale it's a gaussian distribution but the x axis is in db scale okay and uh, and we discussed that for this uh, log normal distribution has zero mean mean for this variable is zero and variance is sigma square okay variance is sigma square standard deviation is sigma okay so we that's what we said the path loss now is a random variable if i plot path loss as a function of uh, you know path loss this is db path loss in db and i can actually plot path loss the probability distribution of a path loss similarly i can plot probability distribution of the received power as well because received power is now a random variable the mean received power is an average value because it's a zero mean random variable that will be equal to what you will get from a deterministic model that will be the mean value okay in addition to that there is randomness there is variation because of the we said that that's the best way to uh, capture the the model for a, a received power okay so received power that's the conclusion we came to in the last class the received power or even the path loss both of them are log normal distributed random variables okay so i mean you can very easily see that from here if your path loss is an i mean a log normal distributed random variable receive power is also a log random variable because this is just a constant i'm just adding a constant to this i'm subtracting it from the path loss so finally i can say the average receive power i i can write the distribution in terms of receive power i have an average receive power and this is a probability distribution for it so if i say what is the probability that the receive power is greater than the average receive power so that will be half okay so this is what we discussed and then we discussed a, a very brief basics about the log normal distribution uh, we said if you take ln of a certain variable x you get a log normal distribution and the the values of y can go from minus infinity decibels to plus infinity decibel and one is the mean value when you take log of that you get zero so zero db will be the mean value that's for an ideal log, log normal distribution okay and i said it can be defined this way for, for example the mean need not be just one uh, what i mean is the mean can be some mean value so in this case x by p received at a power the bar you know this can be the definition of the log normal distribution so when x equals pr of r at that point you get zero decibels okay so uh, that's th that's the definition of a log normal distribution and we discussed a very important thing which is we are no normally interested in finding what is the probability that the receive power is greater than a certain value gamma and we said for a log normal distribution with a variance sigma square and the probability that your receive power or the variable y is the x, x axis here greater than gamma is given by q of gamma by 2 gamma by sigma so that's what i've shown it graphically here so the pro and i already derived this in the last class so i'm not even going to go there so q of x is nothing but is defined as the trail probability distribution function if your sigma is equal to 1 so that will be 1 by root of 2 pi integral x to infinity uh, e power minus x square by 2 dx so this is nothing but the area under a gaussian random variable whose mean is 0 and variance is 1 okay area under this graph okay here sigma is 1 mean is 0 so that's what this q function represents so if the mean is finite you just have by sigma da here q of gamma by sigma and that can be very easily shown so i'm not even going to do that the next one is we considered a finite mean what happens if i have finite mean and then i need to find this so in that case the integral will be something like this 1 by root of 2 pi sigma square integral gamma to infinity your distribution is going to be e power y minus sigma by 2 sigma square the whole square okay y minus sigma the whole square mu the whole square by 2 sigma square the mean is mu again if you make a substitution y minus uh, sig mu by sigma equals x you can very easily show that the error will simply be q of gamma minus mu by sigma okay here gamma is greater than mu so this is the probability that your receive power or y y here is your receive power greater than gamma okay provided you also have a mean mu then what is the probability that your receive power is less than gamma what is the probability that your receive power is less than gamma you have to just interchange mu and uh, gamma so it will be simply q of mu minus gamma by sigma 
okay so this directly follows from this property so uh, in fact you don't even need to see any of this let's assume this is a gaussian random variable uh, if this is the probability if this is q of gamma by sigma then this variable is simply going to be 1 minus okay 1 minus of that and uh, you can very very easily show that this result is simply q of uh, this result so this follows from q of x equals uh, 1 minus q of minus x okay uh, i'm sorry this is actually 1 minus cdf of x cumulative distributive function of x so which is what is the probability that your receive power okay what is the probability that your receive power is less than gamma is nothing but the cumulative distributive function okay it's, it's this area here is what we call cdf or cumulative distributive function okay so that is simply 1 minus q of x so uh, this this is something you should be aware of from comses itself so if let's say q of x tells you the tail probability distribu distribution function okay and cdf of x is the area here so your cdf of x is cumulative distribution dist distribution function is simply 1 minus q of x okay so it will follow from that as well so you can i mean if you didn't follow the just ignore it i mean if, if i probably if i didn't explain that part well you can just ignore that just you just have to find what is the probability here uh, this is actually y is less than gamma which is nothing but the area under this integral that will simply be q of y by uh, mu minus sigma by mu minus gamma by sigma in fact sigma can be here as well you know your sigma can be this is mu and this is sigma so you just have to find the area under this curve okay that is going to be q of q of so previously if you recall uh, q of gamma minus mu by sigma is nothing but the area under this graph okay so now q of mu minus gamma by sigma will be the other one the area will be if i use a different color so this is the area that it's going to represent okay so uh, it simply very simply follows from a very uh, it's 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 a different result i'll probably discuss it a little later uh, that result how it fall probably in one i'll try to post a video on q function separately uh, once you understand the properties it's very very simple to follow the q functions so this is the other result that you should be aware of now why are we doing this we'll see the motivation for it so just to quickly refresh the received power now can be represented in terms of there are only two main things to characterize the receive power you need to know what the transmit power is or the path loss at a certain distance or not okay so this whole thing pt minus pl of r or not is nothing but the receive power at a distance or not in dbm okay then if you subtract minus of 10 and log r by r not that gives you the mean value plus x db see here uh, if you re recall from the previous expression it should be minus x db but then since uh, x uh, minus x x is just in decibels okay x db simply means x is in decibels it's a log normal distribution with zero mean so whether you subtract it or add it it doesn't matter okay it's going to be the same so that's why it's symmetric around origin so whether you subtract or add it doesn't matter so i can just directly write it as plus x db so this entire thing is now your received power it's now a random variable okay so this part is what we call this part of it i'll use a different color so this this part of it is what we call the average receive power so this will be pr of r the average which will be mu okay plus the random variable that we are going to add now generally we are interested in finding what is the probability that the receive power is greater than a certain value gamma okay so now if you see the receive power is a random it's a statistical random variable the depend parameters of interest in this receive power are n the path loss exponent and the sigma which is the variance of the log normal distribution the third thing is receive power at a distance r not you should this is a reference power which you need to measure right that's what we discussed once you know that then you can completely know the receive power at any distance greater than r not so this is the main thing which we are to discuss here so what is the receive power probability that your receive power is greater than 
gamma. That is simply Q of, if you recall the previous expression, Q of gamma minus mu by sigma. So this is, this the graph is like this. Here I'm assuming gamma is uh, greater than mu, it doesn't matter. Uh, it can be even less than mu, it's still this expression is valid. Okay. So Q of gamma minus mu by sigma, where mu is here, uh, so here it is plus gamma minus P R of R with a dash on top of it. So with, a, with, an, with an over line, okay. So this is your mean power, mean received power. Similarly, what is the probability the received power is below gamma? So this is usually the probability that your call gets blocked, okay. That is given by Q of gamma minus mu by sigma. Uh, sorry, that is going to be Q of, so this is plus minus, Q of mu minus gamma by sigma. So if you recall, it's it's from this graph, I said this is mu and this is gamma, the area under this graph is simply going to be Q of mu minus gamma by sigma. Okay, see here gamma can even be greater than mu, it doesn't matter, but this expression is valid. Okay, so this is how you find what is the probability that your receive power is greater than gamma and less than gamma. So finally, the most important parameter uh, in this analysis is going to be to find, okay, we know what is the probability that your receive power is greater than or not, I mean greater than gamma at a certain distance. The more important thing which, which is important for operators is what is the area of coverage. So from the base station, we know now what is the power at a distance r and that's a random variable, right? It's it's not a deterministic variable, it's a random variable. Now let's say at the boundary, I'll, I'll call capital R as the boundary, is the radius at the boundary, that is P R of capital R, that's your receive power at the boundary, is greater than gamma. There is a certain probability, let's say there is 0.75 is the probability that your receive power is greater than gamma, okay? Now the question is, Ideally, let's say it's a deterministic system. De deterministic system meaning there is no probability or random variation. So that then that means that the probability that your receive power uh, is equal to gamma is 1. Your receive power is equal to gamma is 1. Then we know that it's a path loss, a system with a finite path loss. So everywhere inside the receive power is going to be greater than gamma. Right? Because it's if it is gamma here, the receive power, if it's a, de it's a deterministic path loss system, so receive power is going to decay down like this as we move away. So here if it is gamma, Anywhere inside it's going to be greater than gamma. So the radius of coverage is simply going to be pi r square. Area of coverage is going to be pi capital R square. Or the fractional area of coverage will be will be uh, the radio, radius that this cell tone cell tower covers divided by the you know the boundary area, which is pi r square divided by pi r square, which will be one. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that, so there is a parameter called U of gamma, which is the fractional area of coverage. What the operators are interested in is, in this entire area pi r square, is it guaranteed everywhere that the received power is always greater than gamma? If it is not, then you are interested in finding out what is the area where the received power is greater than gamma, and then you divide it by the total area. So this will give you the fractional area of coverage. Now I told you, if it's a deterministic signal, the fractional area of coverage will always be equal to 1 if you meet the condition on the boundary, where if the boundary receive power is equal to or greater than gamma, obviously anywhere inside it's always going to be greater than gamma. So the boundary, the area of co fractional coverage is going to be 1. Otherwise, if it's a finite, because we have a probability here, even though the boundary power can be greater than gamma at the boundary, it can be less than gamma somewhere inside because it's it's all a random variable, right? Anywhere it can be less than gamma. Okay, so that's why we are trying to compute this. Now, how do you compute the probability inside? So we'll just adopt it's a two-dimensional problem. So just you have to apply integral calculus. So let d theta be the small angle here and r be the radius. So then I'll consider a small differential area element. So the area of this differential area element uh, see r is the radius here so you should understand r is the radius and d theta is the angle so area of the arc is going to be r d theta and dr will be the area of the differential radial element the area is going to be r dr into d theta so in that region you are supposed to find what is the probability that 
we are interested in finding what is the probability that the receive power pr of r is greater than gamma and then now we will integrate it over the entire plane entire uh, azimuthal plane here now if you recall the received power is actually independent of the radial uh, independent of the angle theta which means it is constant it only depends on r it doesn't depend on theta right so then if you see this whole integral here is independent of theta so i can remove this and bring theta here i can bring theta here so integral 0 to 2 pi d theta is simply 2 pi so you will get 2 pi by pi r square you will get 2 by r square so that's what this reduces to so finally we have a an integral of this form okay i'm integrating it from 0 to r r is the boundary now this you get a slightly complicated expression when you find the overall integral expression you get a slightly complicated expression but I, I don't expect you to know that expression okay all you need to know is if the I mean as an operator what you are interested in knowing is if at the boundary I am ensuring that the probability that the signal received is greater than gamma is say so much say 0 0.9 or 90 percent there is a 90 percent probability that the receive power is greater than gamma what is the fractional area of coverage how much percentage of area will i cover okay so if you derive this expression it depends on the ratio sigma by n sigma is the log normal distribution random variables variance and n is the path loss exponent and also it depends upon the the probability of radial coverage i mean the boundary coverage the received power is greater than r so these are the two things that it depends upon so whenever we have two variables like that it's it's easier to interpret it from a graph so this graph here on this axis it shows u of gamma which is the fractional area of coverage and this axis it, it is the ratio sigma by n sigma is the variance divided by n and we plot it for different values of the boundary coverage probability okay so now one thing should be very intuitive let's assume the boundary coverage probability is 1 which means with 100 percent probability that you are going to receive the signal with a power greater than gamma at the boundary so then obviously even inside you are going to receive it with very high probability so i can say then the area of coverage is going to be one fractional area of coverage is simply going to be that's what this line shows here and that should make intuitive sense the next thing to remember is for a given value of say 0.65 here okay 0.65 is the probability here or 0.7 is the probability here for a given probability the boundary coverage probability okay which is 70 percent boundary coverage meaning the probability that your boundary will receive power greater than gamma is 0.7 then if i increase my variance if i increase my variance then see variance tells you how much your receive power spreads over a nominal value so even though you have met it at the boundary boundary it is 0.7 the probability in the inside the area the because your sigma is very high your receive power can vary significantly which means there is a very high probability that your internally you are going to fail somewhere your receive power can be less than gamma so which means the area of coverage will reduce with increasing gamma so for a given value of n if i increase sigma sorry i have said gamma it is sigma then your area of fractional area of coverage will reduce so that's what this graph is showing us it is reducing with sigma for a given value of n it's reducing okay so that's it so this is the usual thing i might question you in terms of if if i give you what is the received probability uh, the received boundary probability uh, boundary probability you may be asked to find for a given value of ratio of sigma by n what is the area of coverage either graph will be provided to you if i'm asking this i'll ensure the graph is given to you okay so that's it about the uh, discussion about large scale models so quickly to summarize what we discussed we discussed about the propagation wave propagation mechanisms we spoke about uh, reflection diffraction and scattering okay and all these things led to multiple paths the thing with multi path is that if i have a single path if i have a single path in in free space we said that the receive power is proportional to 1 by r square in case of multiple paths we said that it is going to be 1 by r power n we introduce the term path loss exponent then in addition to that we said there will also be randomness to it because we cannot exactly have a deterministic model we started talking about 
a probability random variable called log normal random variable where the x-axis is in decibels. That's the only difference. It's a, it's, a, it's a standard normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution. The only difference is x-axis is in decibels, dBm or dB. So that's called as a log normal distribution. In that case, we are interested in finding what is the probability that the received signal power is greater than gamma. So probability that the received signal power at a distance r is greater than gamma. So that's what we are interested in. Okay, we can't exactly say what is the received power. Instead, we will say with a probability that it's greater than this value. Then finally, we spoke about the area of coverage, u of gamma, as a function of which means everywhere within that area, the received power has to be greater than gamma. And we spoke how to calculate that from a graph. Okay, given the values of sigma and n. Okay, and for a probability of uh, boundary coverage. So that's it. We have completed the large scale models. So if your your textbook are in fact generally, uh, it's the are the remaining things. So this is what we could do analytically. After that, there are several softwares which can do very good estimation of the path loss and the receive power. So those softwares again you cannot analytically compute after a certain point. Okay, you have to rely on softwares for that after a certain point. But the theory what we have developed right now will help you in understanding and interpreting results of those softwares. Those softwares we will not be discussing in this class in this course. Okay, but I'm just telling you that there are softwares which can do that for you. Okay, so finally large signal model is finished. The next lecture we will talk about the small signal effects. Uh, sorry, the small scale effects. Okay, uh, where, wherein the reflection paths can change significantly when you are moving by few wavelengths. So as example, I took it an example in a room, you are walking and talking, the reflection paths can be reflect, out, reflect off at any, it can be from your surface, from your ceiling fan, lights, tubelets, anywhere. It can reflect and then reach your phone. And those paths will change significantly even if you move, move by a few wavelengths. And how to capture that mathematically, that will be the topic of the next lecture's discussion. Okay, I'll be posting an assignment based on the small scale effect. Large scale effect, there isn't much, it's a very simple one. Probably I'll just post a question based on it. But a MATLAB simulation assignment will be post, posted based on the small, uh, small scale effects. Okay, I'll do it probably in very soon. Very soon I'll just uh, post that.